All right, everybody, this is Ross. I'm super excited in today's video because we have an amazing breakfast. I'm gonna be so full eating this pink brandy wine tomato. And also I have three mangoes that are ripe. We're gonna do a tasting a little bit later in a different video. What I wanna to talk to you guys about today is the pink brandy wine. It is, in my opinion, the best tomato you can grow. And I'm sure that there is some better varieties out there, some better genetics, better tasting tomatoes. Uh, but I've grown enough of them. I've grown, um, you know, some around 30 to 40 varieties of different heirloom varieties. Um, I've spent enough time, enough years, trying different colors, different flavors, different types of tomatoes, tomatoes with different textures, hybrids, heirlooms you name it, um, and I've come to the conclusion just in my short experimentation with, uh, with tomatoes is that the pink brandy wine is the best here in my Philadelphia climate. Um, there are some other varieties, like I said, that probably will beat this, uh, but I don't have the time to be trialing you know, hundreds of varieties of tomatoes. For my money, this is gonna please a ton of people, especially if you've never had an heirloom tomato or a homegrown tomato. This is just like insanely good. It really is. So if you're starting out in tomatoes, this in my opinion is the tomato to grow. And it's not necessarily pink brandy wine exactly. What you really are looking for is the Suddeth strain of pink brandy wine. And there's a couple um, of seed growers that uh, actually carry the Sutta strain. I think Baker Creek does, so rareseeds.com. Also the Seed Savers Exchange, they uh, also carry the Sutta strain. So if you can get the Sutta strain, I think that's more legitimate towards the type of pink brandy wine that I'm talking about. So if you've had a pink brandy wine and it wasn't the Sutta strain, maybe you didn't have something that was nearly as good as this. Um, and I think the reason that this tomato is so good is, is the texture. It has a really incredible texture that just melts in your mouth. You don't have to chew it. Um, there's not much fiber to it. Uh, it's got the right amount of juice in it. It's got the right amount of meatiness to it. Um, and it's a meaty tomato, I would classify it as. So these bigger beefsteak types usually are very meaty. They're not very grainy. That's that's a really bad texture that you can find in a tomato. It would be something grainy or something very tough with a very uh, thick skin to it. This is just a pleasure to eat through and through. Not just the eating experience, but the, the actual flavor as well. And the flavor I like to really correlate well to the color of the tomato. This is a, a pinkish red tomato. You can also get some purple tomatoes or maybe some black tomatoes, depending on how you guys want to classify them. Maybe brown, you could say. Those darker colored tomatoes or the pink types, in my opinion, have the best flavor because in all fruits, doesn't matter if it's just tomatoes, it really does correlate well. The flavor of the flesh really well correlates to the flavor of the food that you're eating, the flavor of the, the fruit or vegetable that you're eating. So as an example, things like raspberries, right? Raspberries come in pink and yellow and red and purple and black. They all have different varying forms of intensity and acidity and sweetness of those different raspberry tones. The same thing with figs, right? Figs have a whole spectrum of colors. So the, the lighter colored figs are more melon flavored and more honey flavored. Whereas the brown interior figs are more like brown sugar or more maple syrup, but the red interior figs have a whole range of berry flavors to them. So the, the tomato is very similar in that I find that these pink tomatoes have the most incredible flavor to them. And I look forward to this time every year. It's, it's July 23rd. I'm gonna show you guys the plants. We're gonna eat this real quick, talk about the flavor, the texture. But I wanna show you guys the plants because it, I think that's also really important. And we'll edit this video, put it all together, and uh, you guys will get a good idea of why I think the pink brandywine is the best tomato that you can grow. 
So let's try this now. Oh man. It's just so good. It's got a really nice acidity to it. And there are some tomatoes out there, guys, that legitimately they're just all sweet. They're almost sub-acid. That's not what you want. This has got such a complex fruitiness to it. It's also, and I would describe it as a little bit of a chalkiness, which is quite interesting. I actually find the same chalkiness in these mangoes. It has like a, uh, it's like a good chalkiness. It adds a nice complexity to it. Quite sweet. Melts right in your mouth. I legitimately don't have to chew. You can basically put this in your mouth and it will just dissolve and you can swallow it and it's just like the most pleasurable, moist, juicy eating experience that you've ever you've ever had. I think they're maybe even more enjoyable to eat than the mango. Um, what else can I say about this? It's just complex. It's just very interesting. I find if it was a little bit more ripe, it would also have a little bit of smokiness to it, which also really puts it above other tomatoes. And that's why I think these, the pink types I find are a bit chalky. The darker you go, with tomatoes, the, this color of the flesh, like things like black crim or Japanese trifel, um, you end up getting more of those smokier flavors. The darker they get in color, like the brown or the pink or the black or the purple tomatoes, they just end up having that smokiness to them. And this sort of does, but I sort of had, um, you know, black crim. I grew the Black Beauty. I grew a number of different black, purple, and pink tomatoes side by side. And I always found that pink brandywine was the most productive and it was also the best tasting. So, and it also performs, it just performs really well in this climate. So I don't know how else to really do describe it. Other than that, I think this is a wonderful, wonderful tomato. There's a ton of varieties out there, guys, and people can very easily get lost in the just the tons of varieties that exist in any fruit or in any vegetable. And I think it's really important to stick with the varieties that are just the standards, the just highly regarded, widely regarded by many growers to be a fantastic tomato. So for my money, this is where my money is going to go. Um, I hope that you guys try to grow this thing. Let me show you guys the plants right now. All right, guys. So we've got our pink brandy wine plants that I want to show you. It's pretty dense back here. <laughs> it's really hard to get my camera into the, the tomato plants to show you. You guys are actually in a ton of corn right now, looking down on some of the plants. And it's a pretty dense forest of tomatoes right here. It's a pretty big wall. And I grow them vertically. I grow them up uh, EMT poles as a single stem plant. And I find they're very productive this way. Uh, you can see down here at the base, hopefully, right here is a giant cluster of pink brandywine tomatoes. And it's pretty much like this across the board. I have about a cluster towards the base here of my seven or eight pink brandywine plants. There's a cluster at the bottom that has about four or five tomatoes on it. And uh, that's pretty common. I mean, some of them are, have a little bit less because I've harvested them now, but across the board, even as you go up, they just keep producing. As they grow, they keep putting out flowers. Uh, these single stem plants and this guy over here has two at the bottom but as I go a little bit higher has four on the next truss of tomatoes and then it's setting its uh, third truss of tomatoes which probably will be right I would say sometime around mid-September so we still have time as these guys grow they're gonna still continue to produce fruits as an indeterminate tomato 
Um, as others, they love to put out a lot of tomatoes at once, and I think there's a lot of value in that. But I do love having these beefsteak tomatoes that are really great fresh, that don't need to be processed, like the pink brandywine, for slicing at any time, just so I can always have myself a pink brandywine tomato to use on a burger or uh, a sandwich, whatever it is I want to use it on. They're that good. So I think uh, there's a place for these as well in a sauce, and I've used them in sauces before, in paste. Normally I use my orange banana tomato, but if I'm using, um, if I'm making some sauce, I'm gonna throw in all the tomatoes I got. I'm gonna try to evaporate as much water as possible, you know, try to get that sauce to the right thick consistency that I want. But these pink brandy wines, they add so much flavor. Um, and across the board, some of them are just very productive. So here's the uh, production here, guys. Um, here's a nice little close-up view of some of these clusters. And you can see just how big these tomatoes can be and how many tomatoes there actually are on some of these plants. said as these tomato plants get taller the tomatoes keep going keep forming as these plants get taller they're not the largest plants they're not the most vigorous plants I would say most of them are about at my chest level but I do have here at the top tomato plants that are about 10 feet tall almost so although they're not the most vigorous you could argue they're not the most productive I would argue they are the tastiest.